Hello and welcome to The Print. I'm Rishika Sadam, special correspondent with The Print. All eyes are now on Supreme Court, where a crucial hearing on multiple petitions seeking legalization of same-sex marriage is underway. These petitions seek legal acceptance of same-sex marriage under several acts, such as the Special Marriage Act, Hindu Marriage Act, Foreign Marriage Act, etc. And joining us on the print today is Supriyo Chakravarti, the lead petitioner in this case in the Supreme Court. Supriyo, thank you so much for speaking to the print. And I understand that you do have limitations on how much you can share or speak about this. The case is still in the court, but we appreciate you joining us. And also, this is all about to hear your point of view. So welcome and uh, do tell us what pushed you to file this petition and why marriage as an institution is important for you while you're staying with your partner of the same sex and at a time when same sex relationship, non-marital I mean, is already legal. Well, uh, hello Prishika. Uh, so to answer this question, I would say why anybody would like to get married. You know, it's not about just same-sex marriage or, you know, a, a homosexual marriage or heterosexual marriage. Marriage is important. The, the reason people get married, I would say uh, for companionship, it can be a commitment, a long-term commitment. People get married for security, right? And uh, for us, um, I would say marriage gives, uh, comes with a bundle of rights. Right, the rights could be an inheritance rights or a nomination. It can, it could be a rights to caregiving. It can be a basic medical decision, right, or insurance, etc., etc., etc. So marriage always comes with a bouquet of rights, which all, uh, the heterosexual people always taken for granted. So yes, that's the reason. I mean, there's a, there's a definitely plenty of reasons uh, why we are asking for our rights. But yes, those are the most important reasons. So here, what rights are you particularly talking about? I remember we previously did have a conversation. You mentioned some of them. It could be inheritance. It could be uh, uh, as much as sharing benefits, financial benefits with the partners or insurance. Could you be a little more specific? What rights are you particularly looking at? And you know, this could be very uh, something that's affecting you personally in your day-to-day -day life. What rights are you focused on specifically? See, uh, if you say what exactly the right, it's as I said, it's a bundle of rights, right? Mm. And what we are asking to the Supreme Court is our basic equal fundamental rights, which is a legal recognition of our marriage. So me and Abhay, uh, we are together, it's been more than 10 years, right? We are the most important persons for each other life. But for instance, again, if we go and check, like, we can't even call Abhay as my husband, right? We, it's a very basic thing. So for instance, where we live, the house in the name of Abhay, he owns the house. Uh, to getting a address proof for me was the most difficult thing, right? Uh, because when we go out and say, hey, you know, we are partners. What kind of partners? Are you business partners? Mm -hmm. So uh, that legal recognition, that support system, which is very much required. Just think about a basic medical decision, right? We can't even take, right, for each other. We are just strangers in, in the eyes of law. So these things does matter. And these are these are nothing, this is these are not very theoretical, you know. These are our day-to-day -day basis, day-to-day -day life. I mean, if I if I get into the very emotional aspect, when I introduce Abhay, it's very difficult. If somebody asks, you know, are you married? It still takes, you know, two seconds pause. Did I say yes or no? Right. Uh, today, if I fill a form, maybe a government form, I still need to check as a single. So yeah. it sounds very theoretical here, but this is our day to day basis. You know, the everyday struggle. And um, and if I talk about the social, you know, the society in our in our society, in our culture, still people understand when we say, are you settled? We understand. Are you married? Mm, yeah. <laughs> right. And uh, as I already said, this is a basic, equal and fundamental rights that, you know, um, to rec a legal recognition for our marriage. Right. For a layman, you know, if you had to explain your petition, I do understand it's not complicated. It looks at a lot of uh, things here which can be legalized. How would you put that as? What does your petition actually seek? Well, I think I think I just summed up. Uh, maybe I can I can sum up in one one line here. Yeah. So yeah, we yeah. are uh, asking to the Supreme Court for our basic, equal, and fundamental rights, which is mm -hmm. legal recognition of our marriage. 
I think mm. uh, I think that one line can make a lot of sense here. Yeah. Right. So we've also discussed what changes if you're married. It could be as much as uh, you getting your house agreement or probably you uh, addressing your relationship status in formal documents. These are all the day-to-day things that kind of uh, will impact if same-sex marriage is legalized. And also in the society, when you walk and say who is as your partner, a lot of focus has also been given to adoption particularly. And uh, will this also have an impact? Will legalization of same-sex marriage somewhere around pay way for that as well? And just give us a quick idea if, you know, how does adoption work or how does this feature in, in this particular case here? Uh, well, I will not be able to add much in this particular uh, question. However, I can say, uh, so we have a lot of friends, they, uh, they have kids. But legally, say maybe a father or a mother, um, if I'm talking about the same sex, I mean, a gay relationship or a lesbian relationship, the one mm-hmm. parent doesn't have any rights. Again, when right, I talk right. about the rights, again, the, the, you know, the education, the caregiving rights or the inheritance rights and so on and so forth. Those, see, all the answers coming into this, those same line. Yeah, and those yeah, yeah. Require, right? I mean, suppose, suppose one father is traveling to abroad and the other father is mm-hmm. here in the country. And mm-hmm. if the, he is not having the rights, it does problem. It, it will create a lot of problems. So, that's yes, right. of course, it all comes hand in hand. So, so again, if I, if I talk about the series, it starts with decriminalization, of course, then right. yeah. the marriage yeah. equality and adoption. It all comes together. So there's, uh, that's true. I mean, it's, it's vast as we discussed earlier. So there's on one hand is a petition that's speaking acceptance of same-sex marriage. And then other hand is societal acceptance. Before we come to what the court or the center has said, I want your point of view. Abhay and you, like you said at the beginning of the interview, have been together for more than a decade. And uh, how have you had any untoward experience when you tell people that you are in relationship with Abhay? And also the, the set of close friends who understand your relationship, the people who understand same-sex relationships. But at place of work or the place you stay in right now, uh, have you had any such experiences? Uh, you know, I really wanted to answer this question in two aspects. Number one is, what is society? I mean, see, we with this generation, we we live in a bubble, right? We meet the same people in regular basis. If you ask me what is society for me, I would say my society is the people I grew up with, my, right. my family, my, my parents, my extended family, relatives, my friends, my colleagues, acquaintance, my students. So these are the people I call society, right? And they... I wouldn't say they uh, accept it from the day one, but they have seen us, they have learned about it, and now they cherish, they are, they are with us, right? So when we talk about the society, I think we underestimate a lot or we generalize a lot. Maybe we are so conditioned yeah. that hey, society That's will never understand, you know? So, um, and if you say, um, did I get any hiccups? I would say not really, you know? Maybe there are people, they uh, might agree, still learning, lack of awareness or whatever, they never say it loud, right? Because in the beginning, as, as I said, we we meet the people in regular basis. We live in a bubble. So so our people, they they learned about it and they accepted it. So, yes. But uh, there must have also been people who may not be okay with it or who wouldn't uh, really understand the concept. At that point of time, did you have hiccups, I think, is... Uh, relatively a smaller word I think you're using given that how much you'd had to face explaining people. We've come a lot way. Ten years ago, several people on the idea of several people on this subject was a lot different. I think now there's a lot more awareness. But you should tell us how has it changed in the last decade and are there any particular incidents that you'd like to look at? Uh, well the pati- I would say it's again uh, it's a process, right? If you go back a little, you know, maybe you know 2013, uh, the recriminalization. A lot of people yeah. went back to the closet, including us. Yeah. Me and we were scared. We were scared because that time we were living in a rented house. And we, we were scared that if any day our our tenant, I mean, our own flat owner will get to know, they might throw us out from the mm. flat. So mm. fear was always there, right? It definitely gave a lot of courage and confidence when the 2018 judgment came. Then mm. we start slowly coming out to the people, right? If we, and 2021, we had a wedding in Hyderabad. So and I, had, I was, yeah, that that was that was in, you know involving a lot of people. It was a lot of you know media attention and etc. Happened later, but I was scared. I mean, to be honest, uh, when the invitation process going on and you know engaging vendors, getting a venue, 
the first couple of a conversation i felt like hey you know he is clearly said ki the venue is not available because he get to know that it's a gay venue and i don't i don't blame them because that was it's 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 all about lack of awareness and things happen right and when people see i strongly believe this um the acceptance part comes with a lot of awareness if you are aware about things people tend to accept so true, true. so when people are start, so after 2018 judgment and if i see my life i mean our, after our wedding there are a lot of conversation happen there are a lot of awareness happen so things are definitely getting better people are more confident today to talk about it right to put yeah. their opinion loudly so yes so there are a lot of situ there were a lot of situation initially but i think today is definitely it's a brighter day and we are looking for a brighter tomorrow that's right in fact i wanted to talk about your wedding ceremony if i may say because this happened in 2021 december probably the first such in the city uh, so you know the government or the union ministers while petition of same sex legal marriage legalization is underway have pointed out how if this is legalized it could have an impact on the society so when you had your wedding you'd invited your close people some of media friends suddenly there's a lot of media attention on it uh how was it how do you think people took that now when i mean people it's beyond your social circle like you mentioned society for anyone is people who they grew up with who they accept in their close circle but how do you think with that with that kind of media attention how do you think people perceived it or received that news you did mention that one of the venue guys had also cancelled as soon as he got to know this was a gay wedding ceremony or celebration of a gay relationship uh, you know we're still not sure if the wedding word can be attached to it given the situation we are in but uh, and has life changed after so much of public glare and at that time how do you think people beyond your close circles have received that ceremony uh well again i have a mixed reaction to it so initially um there are a lot of trolls of course in 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 social media and uh, you know the online platform however if i compare i think the acceptance was more you know and when i say this uh, it's a journey right it's a journey for me as a human i'm also seeing things and learning a lot so uh if i if i talk about it so i was the first phase i was scared uh the post wedding i still remember i didn't even take any phone call for next 7 days because i don't know how to react i didn't know what people going to talk but slowly things were better i mean people there are there are amazing messages pouring in my social handle and those are those are very very close to my heart i mean people were celebrating people are cherishing people said that you gave us courage uh, though mm-hmm. it wasn't an agenda but however uh, somehow we create that impact and when you talk about the society i think we we underestimate them a lot you know i can give you a small example here so for my wedding there were a lot of kids attended that wedding you know my extended yeah. family is in a friends kids and all and they are very young they're like they're they're like 3 years old 4 years old and we always had that notion in our mind how kids will react you know it's a gay wedding or gay celebration or whatever commitment celebration but the best part what i noticed the kids were super excited and they're just going out to their neighbors and saying hey you know supriya uncle and abhay uncle is getting married we are visiting the wedding etc 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 the point here is what i learned they are not conditioned you know it just just about the exposure there is nothing different for them i will add one more thing here i think which yeah, is very yeah. important uh, our our house help right so we were very skeptical how to tell her right he you know uh, we are getting married and you know so we couldn't invite her because we are so conditioned we are so scared that how to tell her but after wedding she said a beautiful thing she said why did you think that i will not understand so we are conditioned the problem is with us that we think the grassroots level people these people will never going to understand but we it's just a myth we underestimate them a lot so i think a right awareness can help can go a long way that's that that's beautiful but i also understand the kind of skepticism that comes with opening up to people or you don't know who would and who wouldn't understand did you have people uh, you know did you have instances where initially you probably had to especially that period of 2013 to 2018 or even after when you couldn't disclose your relationship with abey to public or probably your homeowner and did you have people coming up and ask you how he is he related to you when you were in social circles any such thing at that time oh man many times and <laughs> many times so uh, people used to think we are brothers uh, and we are like 
I don't know how to answer. So like, we are partners in a very, very sophisticated way is to say we are partners. People used to think, what kind of partners are you business partners? So those things happen. But end of the day, Rishika, uh, the people who really matter to us, uh, we just opened up in front of them. The people, they're just, a, you know, we're just meeting for once or twice. It's not required. So that was our agenda when uh, before 2018. Uh, mm. So we, we didn't talk much about it. So after 2018, uh, we got the courage, especially during the COVID, I think 2020, uh, we actually came out from the closet together uh, to the whole world. So, yes, I mean, so I, 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 yeah, I mean, once you once you love, you don't need to take anybody's permission. You're just in love. That's OK. <laughs> That's true. And then the celebration ceremony happened in 2021. Yes. Right. So let's also also look at, you know, let's uh, look a bit at the petition and what's happening in the hearing. The center had objected to it also reciting the reason also for put, putting the point forward, saying those who seek legalization or are seeking legalization of same sex marriage are of the urban elitist view, although the court had a different view at that point of time. So do you agree with that urban elite viewpoint? And if no, uh, do you think the rights that we discuss, be it insurance or home rent and all of these, uh, the legalization of same-sex marriage or the issues that come up with not legalizing it impact all sections of the society? Now, here by all sections of the society, I mean uh, same-sex couples relation who are in relationship, same-sex relationship, coming from different quarters of life, from coming from different economical backgrounds, rural backgrounds. Do you think for them, this petition is as equally important as it is for you? These rights actually give a support, create a support system. And when there is a support system, uh, it comes, the, the awareness comes along with it, right? So when you say urban elitist, I would, I would say uh, I don't agree because there are a lot of petitioners from, uh, you know, different parts of uh, country the different okay, walks yeah. of life and uh, i don't want to go much into the technicality here but mm. i can i can just tell about myself see i belong to a very small town i mean when i realized that i am uh, gay like my teen days there was nobody to look up to in my school it's a full boys school and there was not even an internet right and um it, it was i mean i always say as a queer child uh and when you don't have anyone to look up to or any reference, it is it is scary because you really don't know what's happening with you, right? So if you say urban elitist, I think I will, my personal opinion, I don't agree because I personally belong to a very small town called Ashoknagar, which is in Bengal. So uh, yeah, I mean, I think, I think that answers your question. Right. Um, you know, before we uh, let you know your view on the next question, you know, I'd also like to tell the audience, the government, uh, the Bar Council of India have also all objected to this petition, um, saying that legalization of same-sex marriage will also be cause hindrance or violate several norms, religious, cultural and social norms. Uh, we did have this discussion in Supriya, I mean, you cannot go into length into this, but what is your point of view on this? Does uh, same-sex marriage, if legalized, Will that violate or will this be against the uh, social, cultural and religious norms that we are all living with respect to each everyone's beliefs since ages? Will it be uh, something that's anti all of this? Well, Vishika, I think uh, in this conversation, I talks about a couple of things, which is one is society, what, what we understand about society. I, talk, I, I spoke about kids. I spoke about my house help. I, I think I touched upon all these mm -hmm. aspects which we call society together, right? When we talk about ancient, I would say, uh, I think we should visit Khajuraho's, we should see Khajuraho's scriptures, right? I think there was a lot of conversation happened about mythology as well. Right. So, uh, again, not going much in the technicality, I would say um, we need to move forward. And we are just asking for our fundamental rights because um, I love a person. I just wanted to get married. I, I, this is a basic equal right. So, yes. What are some of the important things that you've learned, especially over the last two years from 2021, your wedding ceremony and then the petition. Now that's being taken up. We've all been following the hearing that's happening in the last week. So what are your key takeaways? What have you learned about this? A uh, couple of things. Number one, uh, if you love someone, you don't need anybody's permission. That I learned when I organized my commitment ceremony. And last couple of months, what I realized that... Um, 
I think the awareness is the key. You know, we need to talk more. Uh, if people, if I'm not aware about something today, I will be scared. I my reaction would be different. So the more important, the most important thing, I think, for everybody in general, um, get the right knowledge. Get you know, you talk about it, learn it. Uh, once you're aware, you will have better understanding. You will be able to react properly. That one right. thing that I have learned a lot. Right. And there's also, when we talk, we've spoken about how people have different views on this. And uh, there's also a lot of argument coming in from the other side of how marriage as an institution, number one, their personal laws that look after or govern individual marriages from different communities and how marriage as an institution from the ancient time has been made for a purpose. Be, be, it could be, uh, you know, procreating the race at the same time, keeping the balance uh, I will not use the word society because we've discussed enough about it, but keeping that balance and paving way for the future generations. There's also an argument coming in uh, that if legalization of same-sex marriage happens, it could create to a disbalance in the society or generally. So how would you react to that, particularly in terms of procreation that everybody is addressing? Well, uh, going back to the first answer to that, what is marriage, which is the most important part would I believe is companionship, your long-term commitment and the security, right? Procreation, yes, but this is not the only reason people get married. So, uh, so that was a legal argument again, and uh, we had a lot of discussion in the court regarding this. But what I can say in my capacity um, personally that I don't believe that the procreation is the only reason to get married. So, and for that, I think, I think we should get adoption rights, right? I mean, there are a lot of kids out there and a lot of couples out there, they wanted to adopt a lot of kids. I think we can do that. Yeah, brings us back to the point of adoption we discussed. So quick last question, Supriyo. Um, how hopeful are you about this? There's, you know, when we listen to the hearing, there's so much, so many point of views that are coming in from the other side, which probably uh, makes people wonder, think in that direction. You've been there in Delhi. So how hopeful are you about this petition? How do you think will it proceed? What would be? Well, um, Rashika, I think this is the time, right? I mean, it's all going into the sequence. So after decriminalization, I think this is this should be the next step. And uh, I have personally a lot of faith to our judicial system. Um, and and this is we are what we are asking, which is our basic fundamental rights. So yes, I am very very hopeful to our judicial system, to our country, to our new generation, and I'm sure I'm definitely there is a better tomorrow. All right, thank you so much for joining us in this session. We wish you a good luck about this, and uh, thank you for our audience uh, for joining into this session. For more stories, you can visit our website and also our YouTube channel for many more such videos. This is Rishika Sagam, Special Correspondent with The Print.